What's up, everyone? What's up? Good morning to you. I see you, Jeffrey Allen James. I see you, Kenny Stanley. I see you rolling up in here this morning. I see you, Adrian, from YouTube. Adrian, let us know, what is it like on YouTube when you're viewing it? Patricia Lyles, good morning. Deborah Johnson, good morning. Kim Edmondson, good morning. Regina Shorts, good morning. Good morning to everyone on the podcast. We have so many podcast platforms. And those of you who are able to find us by audio, whether you are watching uh, live, good morning to you. If you happen to be watching the replay, I want to say good afternoon or good evening to you. Yes, Adrian, it is November. Hello, November. It is indeed November. Can y'all believe it? It's like this year just kind of went by really fast. I see you, my brother, Liz, Friday the 3rd. Good morning to you. But y'all, this, this year just zoomed by. What do y'all have to say about that? I'm like, is it really? Am I really watching Christmas movies, holiday movies? Is that for real? And I am, and I'm enjoying it a lot. So um, so then I have my opportunity to also harass Hallmark Channel and Lifetime Channel, asking them or saying to them all the time. And if you follow me on Twitter, which I don't know how long I'll be on Twitter, but if you follow me on Twitter, I, th I um, tweet Lifetime, I tweet uh, Hallmark, Hallmark Mystery, and I say, Black people string popcorn, Black people sing carols, Black people build snowmans, Black people cook large dinners. I'm always saying that. It's like, give me more. I did a study the other day. This is nowhere in my notes, but I did a study the other day, um, and I was looking for Black Christmas movies, Black Christmas stations. If y'all remember, probably about three years ago, I watched nothing but Black movies in the month of December, and I was logging them each day. I may do that again, not this year, but I may do it again at some point. But anyway, in doing so, um, I was I was on Hulu, I was on Prime, I was on um, Netflix, I was on the different streaming stations, and there's not many Black Christmas movies. I don't know if you know that. And those that are out there and available, you have to pay for them. I thought that was very odd. Like The Preacher's Wife with Whitney Houston, um, it was available on Prime and on Hulu, but you had to pay for it. And I thought, what, what is this? So it was very interesting to see that. So it wasn't in my notes, but I just wanted to share that. Like it's November, y'all. We're at the holiday season. And it's interesting that we don't see Black Christmas movies. And so I don't know, maybe it's calling me to do something to get that out there. Yes, Kim Edmondson, that is I. Good morning, Pastor Alex. Good morning, Danielle, Shardinia, Rosanna. Yes, Deborah, this year has flown by. Adrian said, y'all, YouTube is fine, but it's lonely. <laughs> she said it's lonely. Yeah, because the main chat is on the Facebook page. Um, so that's what's happening. So that's why I, sometimes y'all hear me reading things or going back to pick up some things. I'm doing that for our audio listeners, for our LinkedIn, YouTube, and now podcast platforms because they get a different chat than the rest of you. Um, because you had to identify one platform as your main chat. And from our numbers, it's the Facebook page. But I try to keep everyone still engaged. I see you, Jacqueline. Good morning. So yeah, that's just something about Christmas, something about the holiday. I see you, Mary, and just something that I wanted to share with you all. In doing that, I had a piece I was going to share last week. I don't have time to share today. Maybe I'll get to it on Thursday. But y'all, I've been vetting news sources and vetting television channels and streaming. And I'm seeing some very interesting things. So I had a whole piece I was going to talk, whole segment I was going to talk about for two Thursdays now in a row, and I haven't been able to get to it. Hopefully I can get to it um, this Thursday. I see you, Dr. Antoinette. I see you, Vergie. All right, Vergie and Adrian, y'all have buddies on, on uh, YouTube, on YouTube. Good morning, Lori Wallace. Shout out to Lori Wallace. Y'all, she is doing some amazing things. Don't miss what it is that she's doing, um, her um, production, her producing, um, her choreography, just so much, so much. So hats off to you, Lori, and all the work that you're doing. All right, 
This is our last Tuesday for this upcoming election to talk about us on the ballot. So we have a lot to share with you today, a lot. So again, y'all, it's November. It's also the first day of Native, Native American Heritage Month. So we want to, you know, always learn and see what's happening with people around us. We always want to do that. Good morning, Julie Bryce. Y'all rolling up in here on YouTube. So Julie is on YouTube, Adrian's on YouTube, and Virgie's on YouTube. Good morning, Deborah Sneak. Good morning. So y'all, I want to first, before I get to the voters, there's a couple of things I want to get to um, this morning. And that is, I want to talk about the attacker, um, the uh, suspect um, had a had a interview, just an uh, organic interview with the uh, San Francisco Police Department. And he said that he had intended to take Nancy Pelosi hostage and interrogate her and torture her. Yeah, those are his words. In a voluntary interview with San, uh, San Francisco Police after his arrest, David DePop, the Pappy said he uh, set out to hold Nancy Pelosi hostage and to interrogate her and torture her. Not only that, he said he wanted to break her kneecaps. Um, uh, the suspects told them, he said, if she did not tell the truth and he believed that the, that she's the ringleader of the Democrats who are sharing all of these lies. And that's just where he stood And to our understanding from all the different press releases. He had other lists of people he had planned to get as well. So I don't know if it's too much movie, too much uh, crazy movies, television. I don't know if it's the rhetoric that's being shared. But this is absolutely ridiculous. So he did come out to say that. The other thing before I get to all the voting, the former guy has asked the Supreme Court to block House Dems from getting tax returns. He does not want anybody to get these tax returns. He's been fighting this for years. Um, uh, former President Trump on Monday filed an emergency application asking the Supreme Court to temporarily block a House committee from obtaining his tax returns. So, y'all, this is what's happening. Um, follow this. Follow this. He just wants it temporarily. He just wants us to get um, past November the 8th and possibly through the end of the year before other people are sworn in to these seats. So... It's really, we're coming down to, and this is on the ballot. If I can put that on there now, this is on the ballot. Are we going to be a country that loses our democracy and not hold people accountable for what they're doing? Because if this happens, this will change the game with the Supreme Court. It's our, the game is already changing with them anyway. But I want to share this with you all. He is kind of, to some degree, I mean, let me ask it this way. Has there ever been a president who just contacts the Supreme Court and say, hey, I need you to do this for me? I mean, these things are happening regularly with him and just calling the Supreme Court. He's like, can y'all block them getting my, my stuff out of mar -a largo Can y'all do this? He's like on a direct dial with the Supreme Court. Can you do that? I've never heard this happening before. And I want to hear from you. If you've heard this and maybe I've missed it, please put that in the chat. But I haven't heard this at all. Um, he goes on to say that this, this is the former guy. The case raises important questions about the separation of powers that will affect every future president. No, no, Buttercup, mm -mm, you. This is all because of your scandals and dirtiness and, and underground stuff and under the carpet stuff. It's coming out and you're going to have to be held accountable for it. So there's not anybody else that this is happening to. This is you. So he wants to block the House Ways and Means Committee from obtaining his tax returns. And the goal is what people are saying. I find this very interesting. Y'all, this is on the ballot. If the Republicans win control of the House, and they have been very, very outgoing saying this. They're not hiding this at all, y'all. Yes, Deborah, outrageous. The Republicans win, if the Republicans win control of the House in next week's midterm elections, they, they plan to scrap the Ways and Means Committee's year-long effort to obtaining Trump's tax returns. They're saying that out loud. They're like, we're going to get rid of this. We're going to get rid of that. That's what some of them are running on. And what's happening is 
um, different, different races are being polarized. So it's taken away from the other conversations that are happening. Good morning, Hester. So y'all, that's what they plan to do. They're like, oh, we're just going to erase it. We're going to get rid of this and we're going to move on. Now, speaking of the Republicans, this too is on the ballot. Then I'm going to talk about my real headline today of what's on the ballot. This is been this has been fact checked um, by every source out there. So what I'm about to share with you is has not been made up at all. Um, yeah, we're getting there, Deborah. Yes, Deborah jumped ahead of me, y'all. But that's you know that's my co-host. Uh, affirmative action is on the Supreme Court docket, y'all. That's on the ballot. But hold on, I'm gonna break that down in a minute. Slow down, Deborah. Slow down. Come back over here with me. So, y'all, the Republican vote tracker, it has been vetted. Even Republicans are saying it is so. You can research all of this for yourself. All of this for yourself. Yes, George. Um, I was talking about that yesterday. They plan not only to impeach uh, Biden, they plan to impeach Vice President Kamala Harris. They plan to impeach the AG, uh, Merrick Garland. They also plan to impeach the Secretary of State. The four top people, they plan to impeach them if they take control. And they've been very vocal about it. They already have their, impe their impeachment uh, proposal written up and they've been sharing it from the floor. Pay attention. But here are, here's a list. Y'all gonna let me get to this list or what? <laughs> here's the list of the Republican vote tracker where they have also fact-checked themselves. And I would encourage you to do your own research, but it's already been fact-checked on every platform, every outlet, every party. It has been fact-checked. A hundred percent voted against cheaper gas prices. This is a GOP. 100% voted against cheaper insulin. They did not want $35 insulin. 100% voted against it. 100% voted against cheaper uh, prescription drug prices. 100% voted against child tax credits. 100% voted against the stimulus checks when Biden took office. 100% voted against the Voting Rights Act. Let that sink in. A hundred percent voted against it. If y'all follow me, hit the thumbs up, the hearts, whatever. Just let me know that you are in sync with what it is that I'm saying. And I also want you to research this for yourself. A hundred percent voted against ending gerrymandering. They want to control these maps in every way they can. Yes, Hester, we need to vote, vote, vote. 100% voted against fighting climate change. 100% voted against persecuting, um, I'm sorry, prosecuting rich tax cheats. They're like, we don't want, because they're going to be a part of it. So they had to vote against us. I see you, Karen. I see you, Latrice. I see y'all coming up in here. 100% voted against saving Roe v. Wade. And these are the Republicans. These are the GEP, the GOP. 99% voted against banning assault weapons. That meant one person voted, yes. 99% voted against fighting domestic terrorism. Why? Well, let's just go back to January the 6th. 99, 96, excuse me, voted against keeping birth control legal. 96 voted against gun background checks. This is 96%. 94% voted against um, more baby formula. You know, when they were taking the planes, bringing baby formula over? Well, 99%, 90, excuse me, 94% of the Republicans voted against that. Like, mm -mm, mm -mm, we're not doing that. Mm -mm. Uh, 87% voted against stopping domestic violence. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. Adrian says, we know they don't care about their constituents. Listen here, y'all, this is serious. I'm not trying to intimidate you to incite fear or anything. This is on the record. You can go to congress.gov congress and look up how people voted on your own. And you will see these percentages right there. I'm not making this up. It's there. You can see exactly how they voted. You can go through each name of every person in the past, uh, however long they've been in office, and see exactly how they have voted. Let me keep going because I'm not done. 87% voted against stopping domestic violence. 84% voted against veteran cancer care. Let that sink in. 
Uh, 77 voted against same-sex marriage and 68 voted against upholding the election. That's the list. All of those things are on the ballot come Tuesday. Dr. Antoinette said voting against domestic violence legislation, wondering how many of them have cases. That's a good question. Misha says trash, just trash. My sentiments, exactly. Latrice is having conversations with everybody. I love that. I love y'all talking. Patricia Lyle says, OMG. Good morning, Diane Ladybug. Y'all, this is what's happening. This is what's happening. It's what's happening. So let me keep going. Let's just let me just keep going. I got a lot. I said, this is my last Tuesday. I got to give it all to you. All right. So that's why um, I talked about the GOP promise, commitment to America. I talked about um, the Democrats last Tuesday, where we stand. And what I just shared with you and the division between political parties, I want to talk about the independent voter. Jeffrey Allen James says, it seems the Republicans are against everything that can make us grow. Hey, GOP, how about doing something that would change the world vote percent, uh, vote 100 percent to get rid of Mitch? Well, there's that. Yes, Latrice Jones, it's on the ballot. Um, Patricia Lau says, a few of those hit me because of experience. Yeah, that's and that's how we need to vote, y'all. <clears throat> you need to think about, I've said from day one that we've been on the air for News in Motion, we have to think about our morals and our values. We have to think about um, the people who are in office and where they, how and where they align. That's why I talk about town hall meetings. That's why I talk about um, uh, writing letters to the editor, so forth and so on, y'all. It's so important. So the independent voter, there are several, there are several organizations and websites. There are a couple that I lean more towards because of what they're doing. And those are the ones I'm going to share with you. But I encourage you to Google and find these things on your own. So the first one I want to talk about is the Independent Voter Project. This actually kicked off in uh, California um, in 2016, and it has really grown from there. The Independent Voter Project, they call it IVP, is a 501c4 organization that seeks to re-engage nonpartisan voters and promote nonpartisan election reform through initiatives, lit litigation, and voter education. IVP is best known for authoring California's successful nonpartisan primary. Now, you're probably saying 501c4, what is that? You have to use a C4 when you're talking about the election and their project that they're doing. They can't use a 501c3. They have to go to a 501c4. I would encourage people who are thinking about nonprofit organization, where you're thinking about um, doing like a PAC or something like that, uh, really, really dive into the 501c3s and the 501c4s. There is a difference and you have to file accordingly. That is so, so, so important that you do that. Now, they talk about we work with organizations around the country to reduce the institutional barriers that limit elect, uh, electoral competition, restrict the nonpartisan right to vote, and insulate the two major priorities from um, competition. This particular group, um, when we had the primaries in early, what, May, June, July, August, I think is when they ended, they were the ones coming out saying that is not fair, that independent voters, <clears throat> excuse me, should be able to vote even in the primary election as an independent voter and not being forced to go one way or the other. And they're really trying to make this, hit this point home. And we may eventually see this in the Supreme Court sooner than later. Don't, don't sleep on this. Um, they talk about that they work with organizations around the uh, globe to reduce the institutional barriers, talk about that. And then they say, we believe democracy functions best when most people participate and representatives should be accountable to their entire community, not just their party. And I would agree with that. I agree with that. If y'all agree with that, just um, let me know there. Um, you can, you don't have to write in the chat. You can throw up hearts, thumbs or whatever. Now here's their vision to create a political environment where nonpartisan voters can participate actively and meaningfully in local, 
regional, state, and federal public policy decisions, regardless of party affiliations. Yes, Kim Edmondson, democracy is on the ballot. Their mission to provide voters with politically neutral, accurate, and reliable information about important public policy issues and to encourage nonpartisan voters to vote and participate in the democratic uh, process, including the primaries. Their goals to ensure every voter, uh, regardless of party, has an equally meaningful vote, to challenge the institution rules and, ins and uh, insinuate major parties from competition, to ensure taxpayer funded elections serve the public, not private parties. That's, that's key. Principles remain steadfastly nonpartisan and non ideological. Did I say that? Ideology. Ideological. Uh, support policies and balance populist sentiments in practical public policy. Be straightforward and transparent about who we are and what we stand for. Be willing to be wrong and to correct mistakes in an open and honest manner on a public platform. There's that. You can learn more about this particular um, organization. I don't think we have a banner for it under independentvoterproject.org. So it'll be www.independentvoterproject.org. Now, another good website for the independent voter um, is called Independent Voting. Um, they, are, they are a national strategy, communications, and organizing center works to connect and empower the 40% of Americans who identify themselves as independent. And I hope y'all didn't skip over that number. 40% of Americans are voting as an independent voter. Um, their mission is to develop a movement of independent voters in partnership with Americans of all persuasions to reform American uh, political po uh, process, create an orthodox um, coalitions and use their democracy to develop the nation. Thank you, Latrice Jones, for putting that up there. Um, and they strive for an independent American. Um, and this is how they do this. They say that the American people are rebelling against the overreach of parties, partisanship, and ideology. Uh, this is at the heart of political disruptions, which are becoming commonplace in our country. So they go on and talk about how, more what they're going to do. Now, if you're looking to learn more about them, you can go to independentvoting.org. So that would be www.independentvoting.org. And then, um, I hate to say it this way, but my favorite one is No Labels. Um, and that is in the Ready Publication um, supplemental piece. Um, that uh, hopefully you download already is free. Um, Isaiah, if you will put that image up, if you have not had a chance to do this, just scan this QR code. It will be there. Um, you can download the digital free. Um, the print is like a dollar sixty, but I think it might be too late for them to ship that to you. So the best way to do that is through the digital piece. And I talk a lot in that publication about no label, so you can find more there. Now, as the final is on the ballot before the midterm elections, um, I want to talk first. If y'all have not seen the viral clip from Pastor Jamal Bryant, I would suggest you Google it. It is everywhere. And it's about a two minute clip from where he was preaching on Sunday, talking about um, uh, Herschel Walker. And his key word there says, we don't need a walker, we need a runner. And he breaks that down. So I would encourage all of you, if you have not seen that two minute clip, to be sure to check it out. I got excited. I was like, wow, that was just absolutely amazing. Elizabeth Town says she voted yesterday. I love it. I love it again. Y'all, we want to see 100% participation of those. I believe all of us who are viewing this as regular viewers are all um, uh, registered voters. And so as yesterday, um, if you did not get a chance to put that down uh, yesterday, please put it down today if you have voted so that we can see. We want to, we, our hope is to get 100%. And those of you who are listening by audio or podcast, 
please, please, please just send us an email at newsinmotionwithgail at gmail.com to let us know that you have voted. Uh, Hester said, yes, she heard that clip and got excited too. Deborah Johnson says, yes, she got excited too. Yeah, it was an, it was amazing clip. Now, I have been asked by several states, um, people who have just reached out to us, there's still a need. There's still a need for poll workers. Again, it's a long day, but there is still a need for poll workers. Um, it, it's a long day, and they're trying to get people to sign up by Wednesday this week um, so that they could do the training with you all on Saturday or Sunday and then have you ready to go on Tuesday. Um, you're not doing it alone, so you'll be with the, well, you'll be with teams but there are many locations that will possibly close because we they do not have enough poll workers. So for those of you who have signed up from News in Motion, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we'll see how this is going to turn out. Jacqueline said, I turned in my absentee ballot already. Great. Jeffrey Allen James said, um, also President Obama's speech about Herschel. Yeah, it was, they're coming out swinging. They're coming out swinging. All right, y'all. Y'all ready? Being black is on the ballot. Yeah. So yesterday, the Supreme Court heard the affirmative action case. So y'all, affirmative action is also on the ballot. The U.S. Supreme Court began hearing arguments in two cases challenging the role of race in the college admissions process, a decision that may upend affirmative action policies in higher uh, education. The Students for Fair Admission claims Harvard and the University of North Carolina hold Asian Americans um, and white applicants to higher standards. The group contends the practice violates the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the 14th Amendment guaranteeing racial neutrality. Uh, the universities argue race is one of, one of many factors in determining admission and affirmative actions uh, action has leveled the playing field for Black and Hispanic students. Asian Americans comprise roughly of 28% of the 2026 class of Harvard, and Black students comprise nearly 16%. Uh, without affirmative action, school officials estimate the number of Black students could decrease by more than half, while Asian American enrollment could increase by nearly 30%. Now, y'all, a decision from the 6-3 conservative majority court is expected by summer. You have um, uh, the new justice, um, uh, Jackson, um, Kentanji Brown Jackson, who was, again, engaged in this argument. And you also had Justice uh, uh, Sotomayor um, also arguing this. So we don't know what the outcome is going to be. However... This happened. Associate Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas on yesterday questioned the meaning of diversity as the court heard the high profile challenge against the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill over its race conscious admissions process. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, as diversity was brought up repeatedly throughout the hour long oral arguments, uh, Justice Thomas, the court longest serving justice and widely considered the most conservative, pressed for more specific definition of the term diversity. He says, and I quote, I've heard the word diversity quite a few times and I don't have a clue what it means. It seems to mean everything for everyone. And this was a question that he specifically asked North Carolina Solicitor General Ryan Park who represented the university. He goes on and says, I like you to give us a specific definition of diversity in the context of the University of North Carolina. And I also like you to give us a clear idea of exactly what the educational benefits of diversity at the University of North Carolina would be. So I want us to unpack this here. If you are able to chat, do so. If you're in listening to audio, you're at your work in your cubicle, or you are um, uh, listening to podcasts, I want you to really write in and talk to me about this. I want us to bring you in so you may hear some of your response tomorrow 
on the platform here live. Diane Ladybug said he has a clue. His wife controls his entire being. That's what I thought, Ladybug. I really thought that. I said, well, no, you don't have a clue because you have someone else dictating to you how you're going to respond. And she probably prepared you. She probably read the brief, which is not supposed to be. That's illegal as a Supreme Court justice. And she probably wrote for you how you were supposed to raise the question. So no, you don't have a clue because you live in a life of privilege. There, I said it, and I'm done with that part of it. But you all, Black is on the ballot on Tuesday. I don't care how you think about it. I don't care how you cut it. Being Black is on the ballot on Tuesday. Y'all, there's so much that they're waiting for things to come down. It's ridiculous. Um, I want to also talk about <clears throat> with Black being on the ballot. So if you're getting uncomfortable, you know, sign off now. It's okay. Those of us who want to hear what I have to say, because I'm even excited to talk about it because I've really dug into this and to bring this on this Tuesday before next week's election. <clears throat> Y'all, I'm tired. And get this, Bloomberg reports that more Black women than ever are running for Congress and governor. But here's the problem, y'all. They are not getting the money they need from the DNC because that's the platform they're running. That's the party they're running under. Um, they're not getting the money for that. They're just not getting the money for it. So Isaiah, put up the first graph so everybody can see the first graph there. Historic highs for Black female candidates. Y'all, over 130 Black women are running for the House of Representatives in the U.S. 2020 midterm elections. I just want you to look at that. There's the, the uh, black line is all, you have the Democrats, that's next. And then underneath there, you have the Republicans. But here's the problem. <clears throat> In the black community, we're not supporting them. We're not giving them any money. We're not doing anything to help their platform progress. I'm um, back to the question I asked on yesterday. If there was a non-conservative uh, white man uh, uh, social media platform, would we join it? And if not, why not? Why are we so um, slow to support our own? You can take that one down, Isaiah, thank you. Why are we so slow to support our own? And, and my other problem is for those of us who give money to the DNC or to the independent party or to the GOP, why isn't our money being used to help these black women run for their offices? Why is it that their ad space is down to like maybe 10 grand or maybe down to a million dollars where other platforms are getting hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions, if not billions? That's a question we need to be asking ourselves. And at some point in time, we need to say, we're done. We're done. Joe, I'm talking to you right now. It was black women who got you in the office. We already see that. Go ahead, Isaiah, and put up that chart. I think it's the colorful chart. If you can put that one up, no, nope, nope, the next one, the next one. This one right here, y'all, racial composition of Biden-Trump coalition. Biden voters, you will see right there, 61% white, 39% voter of color. You see Trump was 85% white and 15% voter of color. I want to tell you all in that Biden uh, piece right there, that 20% of the 39%, who do y'all think that is? It's people who look like me. Yeah, me, female, woman, black. That's who put him over the top and got him into office. Thank you, Isaiah. And and y'all, and that's why we are tired. We are fatigued. We don't even feel like voting. We don't even feel like voting because we're like, we've done all this and we can't even get voter rights. Y'all, this is on the ballot. So, so hear me when I say this. We can't become too exhausted just yet. We got to get through November the 8th. And then we need to have some serious roundtable conversations we need to write into the White House, write into the administration, say we need to talk to somebody, write into the DNC, the Independent Party, the Republic, whoever. I need to be a part of this table because there's a disparity here. There really is. Someone put in the comment section on um, uh, Jamal Bryant's piece yesterday and said, the DNC needs to hire you for messaging because he was so clear, he was so concise, and he let them know, look, y'all, we're over with this part of it. 
You can no longer treat us like this. You can no longer give us what you think we want to hear so that we can be motivated to get you in the office to be spit upon or slapped in our faces once you get there. That's over. We're going to get you through November the 8th. Mm -hmm. I believe we will get you through November the 8th. But after November the 8th, and I'm calling on all News in Motion viewers, whether you're Black or, an, or, or our ally, we need to stand up together, not in a, in a confrontational way, but in a way to say, look, here's our record. This is what we have done. Now it's time for action. But I want you all to hear me. I want you to hear me today. Please hear me today. If we do not see the majority in the House and the Senate, we can forget this for a long while. They're saying at least a decade, at least a decade before things shift again. So y'all, that's on the ballot, but I'm not done. Women are once again breaking uh, records in the U.S. election cycle, including a high of 133 Black women vying for spots. Y'all got that? Uh, a a, a four-fold increase from 2016. Another 21 Black women are also running for U.S. Senate, where there are currently no Black women in the Senate. None. None. Uh, this data is coming from the Center for American Women in Politics at Rutgers University, which tracks gender and U.S. electoral politics. The center has found an uptick in interest from women in the last few election cycles, but yet the women, y'all already know where we're in this, where we are like being um, marginalized. There's a disparity over here. We're not even getting the dollars to be able to run. Why not? Why not? So let me bring this up. Where are you, Black Caucus? Where are you? Where Are you making a stand for the Black women who are running for these offices? Where, where, what's happening here? Now, they, they're not Black, but I'm going to use this as an example. We have Tim Ryan in Ohio. I'm talking about Ohio for a moment. We have Tim, Tim Ryan in Ohio running for the U.S. Senate. He's getting millions, if not billions of dollars. I've seen the numbers. Nan Whaley, who's running for governor, which you know, everyone says she doesn't have a chance, they didn't even give her a chance as a female. They didn't even give her a chance. They're not giving her any money. Help me understand that. So people are saying, well, if you just vote down ballot, she's a part of the down ballot when it comes to Tim Ryan. Okay, that sounds like a good plan, but why not give her the money? Because if you're not positioning her to win, if you're not positioning her to be able to, uh, to serve well as governor, if you're not positioning her in that light, what? Y'all, I'm telling you, I have studied this stuff. I don't know why I'm not in some huge office somewhere helping people break this down because this is ridiculous. And yes, I seem like I'm on a rant. I seem like I'm fussing and maybe I am, but I'm that passionate about it. I'm not angry. I'm just passionate about it. So y'all, we see the breakdown of the analysis. We see the racial turnout gap. We see the election demographics. And I love this ex excerpt, excerpt, excuse me, from um, April Ryan's new book. And I don't care if you're black, white, purple, green, red, or go. Everyone go get April Ryan's new book, Black Women Will Save the World. There, I said it. She says in her book, they are trying their best not to witness another massive turnout like the one seen during the 2020 general election, which, by the way, was organized by Black women. And even that is not getting enough attention as it should be receiving. Black women organized that 2020. Like, come on, let's go back to news in motion. I told y'all what to wear. I told y'all what not to wear. I told y'all what to pack in your lunch bag. I told you to take a chair. I was always concerned and coming back. We were having conversations. We were sharing the information with other people. Black women did that. Black women were the ones that were holding house parties. 93% Black women did that. Black women were out there talking to young Black males uh, with their saggy pants on parking lots and everywhere else. Black women did that. I'm not taking away from Black men because you two did it as well. Black people together moved that 2020 election. And yet, here we are today, one week away from the midterm elections, and we don't even have voters right. Something is wrong with that. She also says in her book, 
Last year in 2021, just between January and June, 17 states enacted 28 laws to restrict access to the vote. Yeah, we've been talking about that. We've been talking about all the rules, all the laws, and everything that's going on, and yet they want us to suffocate. All right, so let's go back to Supreme Court ruling and affirmative action. Here's my thought on that. Why don't we just make a decision that we just all going to attend and make sure our children attend, our children's children attend, and whomever else, because we're going to set up trust, we're going to set up uh, stocks and bonds, we're going to set up uh, scholarships to HBCUs. Can y'all imagine that if we start pouring the money back into the HBCUs, the colleges and universities, and we just say, okay, you don't want us there. Okay, we can already make this an amazing institution. It's already amazing. We're going to take it to the next level A great. We're going to produce so many people, so many educated people. They're not going to have to worry about any type of student debt relief because we're going to pour our money into these colleges and universities, and we're going to see the Supreme Court justices come from the HBCUs. We're going to see um, uh, uh, CEOs for major banks come from the HBCUs. We're going to see superintendents of schools all over America come from HBCUs. We're going to see uh, surgeons and, 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 and nurses and, and physicians and OBGYNs and engineers and astronauts. We're going to see all of these things come from HBCUs. You want to play with us? Let's start playing. But we're about to come out playing chess because we're over it. At some point, and I can't believe I'm about to say this, and I'm going into the inspirational message. At some point, y'all, at some point, and again, I can't believe, I think I'm, 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 I'm slow saying this because I don't want to say it, but I'm going to have to. Ye ain't all the way crazy. I took time over the weekend and started pulling out some of the things he was saying. And I'm like, okay, you get messy because you say things that are that are divisive and they're horrific and, and anti-Semitic uh, and, and so forth. That part, no, I don't agree with. But some of his thinking ain't too far off. It's not. It's not. It's just not too far off. It's just not too far off. But we don't want to, we don't want to capture that. So we talk about monopoly. Well, isn't Amazon a monopoly? I'm just asking a question. Don't throw anything at me, but aren't they? Aren't they? What, what's going on here? You know, like the Supreme Court saying they're not going to hear certain things because, oh, this is a monopoly. We don't want to allow for this. We don't want to do. Well, isn't Amazon a monopoly? Seriously, isn't it? You're talking about you want fair trade and you want competition, but yet black people can't even get a piece of the pie. You only allow so many people at the table. Y'all, did y'all know this? Did y'all know that? And, and, and I had this conversation with my siblings on Saturday and didn't realize that everybody at the table didn't know this. Did y'all know that Oprah no longer owns own? Y'all, did y'all know that? I just want to know if you know that. And I love that uh, uh, Byron from Comcast, he done made a broker to deal with CBS to get HBCU sports on CBS. Hello, somebody. Y'all, at some point we have to say, well, a no would just be a no. I'm going to come forth and do it. So what am I saying, y'all? We need to pray the prayers of the righteous availeth much. That's the inspirational message. Y'all, seriously, I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. I don't care. The bottom line is back to what I was sharing from the independent voter, the sites that I shared with you there. Y'all, are we willing, are we willing to pray and to say, okay, what's the best solution here? Who should I bring to the table here? Who should I really vote for here? Why are they the best candidate? The critical thinking piece that I put in Patreon, people are coming back saying, girl, why didn't you send this to us two months ago? Well, because I just didn't send it two months ago. But now that you have it, use that, y'all. It's time for us to start thinking critically. It's also time for us to start having each other's back. The prayers of the righteous of Bella's much. We can no longer sit back and let people get attacked. We can't do that. We need to not be like, oh, I better not say nothing. We better stand up for that person. You see that person on your job being discriminated against, don't sit back and watch it. That happened to me at a ministry. I was a vice president of diversity for International Women's Ministry. 
I served all of the the uh, United States of America. I served uh, South Africa, Johannesburg. I served um, in Brazil. I served in Israel. I served in uh, missing some Germany. I, I served in Bahamas. I was discriminated against. The black woman of the vice president of diversity for an international Christian women's ministry. I was discriminated against. I had coworkers who watched it unfold and they didn't say a word, not a word, not a word. We went to court when everything, everything else I lost because people wasn't going to come out. Although I had some stuff written down, some emails that I had saved, all of that. My coworkers, they would be like, I see it, but you know, I need my job. I can't lose my job. I don't want to be retaliated against, so I just can't say anything. I understand that, but come on. At some point, if many of us would take a stand and start talking and sharing, things would happen for our good. Y'all, November the 8th is, is crucial. I have said it since January, I believe. It is the most important election of our lifetime. We need to vote. We need to use our vote as our voice. And I'm not saying wait till the following week, the next day, once the numbers have been tallied and come in, we need to then flood the Biden administration with letters saying we want to be at this table, flood the DNC, flood the independent party, flood the GOP with our letters, flood the, the uh, phone lines. No, you will no longer ignore us. No longer. That ain't happening. That ain't happening. And we're going to do it professionally. We're going to do it in, uh, with our intellect. We're going to do it with um, speaking truth to power. We're not going to wait for a year to start registering people to be poll workers. We need every polling location open. Everyone. Everyone. We need to really push vote by mail. Vote by computer. Heck, we got our own uh, 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 medical stuff online. We got our banking stuff online. All of those things are supposed to be secure and all of that. So why can't we put our voting online? Why can't we do something? Let's stop talking and start taking action. I know this was a different news in motion this morning. I know it was. And I was eager and excited. I couldn't sleep last night. I said, I'm going to talk about blackness. I said, I have never been more black in my life until the last five to six years. And I'm proud to be a black woman. I'm proud to be an African American female sharing on this platform, my truth for my community of people. I wanna give a shout out to all of our allies. We know you stand with us. We know you're with us. We know that, but you also have to take a step back and let us take the head. But you have our backs. Y'all, It's the, the tide is about to turn. And the question is, are we ready? It's like when, when, when the Israelites, when they came right there, you know, they're right there at the Red Sea. They were there. They were like, what's going to happen? And the waters parted. Y'all, we got to say, well, it's, you know, we, we can't walk across this. We, some of us going to die because we can't swim. But we have to trust and believe the waters are about to part and we're about to walk to the other side. We, we have to just uh, 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 agree with that and believe that. Now, this is the most important election of our lifetime. All right, y'all know what I say. Stay well. And remember, everyone, make some bold moves. I'm out. Yeah.